So now we are going to discuss the uh, mechanical asphyxias and uh, more specifically non strangulation related mechanical asphyxias and the first one is as the title displays you see smothering. What smothering? Smothering as the picture displays it is closing of nose and mouth by mechanical means and uh, the closing of nose and mouth can uh, lead to certain specific autopsy findings. What do I mean by specific autopsy findings? The autopsy finding that will help us predict that the cause of death was smothering. The autopsy findings in asphyxia related deaths can be divided into two categories. Some will be specific and certain will be non-specific which will be from the non-specifics are found in each and every type of asphyxia. It doesn't matter how the person dies but the non-specific findings will be found in every asphyxia. And uh, can you recall the non-specific findings? We have previously discussed it, right? Non-specific findings include things such as cyanosis, congestion, edema, petechial hemorrhages, visceral congestion, and abnormal fluidity of the heart. Specific findings. Specific findings will be different for each and every type of asphyxia, and they will help us predict the exact cause of death. So, autopsy finding in smothering, um, specific autopsy finding in smothering will be bruises and abrasions around the nose and the mouth. There will be also nail marks around the nose and mouth. Impressions of thumbs and fingers in that region can also be seen. And pillow pallor. What's pillow pallor? Pillow pallor means that if soft material like pillow, as in this picture, if soft material like pillow is used, then the signs of pallor will be seen in this region, i.e., area around the mouth and the nose um, around the mouth and the nose there will be also bruises on the lips and inner aspect of uh, and on the inner aspect of gums why does this happen as uh, you see in this picture uh, hand is the hand of the assailant is applying pressure to the mouth and nose of the victim so the mouth and the uh, more specifically the lips will be, get compressed against the gums and the teeth this will cause bruising or injury to the lips and gums and this will also be seen in the autopsy now, in what, in what cases smothering is seen, uh, I, I believe you had a wonderful childhood and uh, if you had a wonderful childhood then you must have um, uh, wore uh, plastic bags at some time in your childhood to feel like spaceman. So what happens in uh, certain unfortunate cases is that child um, wears a plastic bag to feel like a spaceman and the plastic bag sticks to their nose and their mouth and sticking causes ultimately leads to smothering and death of the child and this is known as spaceman syndrome. The second is mother's changing side in deep sleep and during changing side mother uh, the, uh, the position of the mother's body leads to suffocation of the child or compression of the nose sorry compression of the nose and mouth of the child and ultimately leads to smothering and death and the third example is breastfeeding uh, how can breastfeeding cause smothering if the infant is pressed tightly against the breast in uh, during breastfeeding then this can cause uh, smothering the next thing we are going to discuss is the traumatic asphyxia and ignore the drugs as far as focus on this picture and it, this picture conveys um, almost 80% of the knowledge about the traumatic asphyxia. Seeing this picture you can, uh, how would you define the traumatic asphyxia? Seeing this picture as you see, as you see that the trunk of a tree has fallen on the back of this victim and uh, the definition that you can deduce from this pic should be that traumatic asphyxia is immobilization of chest and this immobilization can either be anteriorly i.e. if you sit on the if a, uh, if a person sits on the chest of a poor victim and in this immobilization can be posteriorly as in this pic the trunk of the tree has fallen on the back side of the victim so if the chest gets immobilized the poor victim cannot generate enough negative intrathoracic pressure as to cause the air movement from outside to inside. So if the air movement is disturbed, this will obviously lead to asphyxia and uh, ultimately death. What autopsy finding, uh, i.e. it is high yield to note that these autopsy findings are specific ones, non-specific autopsy findings like I previously mentioned will be found in each and every type of traumatic asphyxia. And uh, the non-specific, uh, it never hurts to recall them. Non-specific findings include things such as edema, congestion, abnormal fluidity of the blood, petechial hemorrhages, etc. And specific autopsy findings at the, uh, as uh, the pig displays there, there is trauma to the chest, so obviously there will be fractured ribs and bruises and abrasions to the, on the chest. Bruises and abrasions on the chest. Similarly, uh, the trauma to the chest will lead to trauma to pleura and this will be visible on the autopsy if the chest wall is open. The most high yield point of this slide, which I have uh, written in the 
uh, I have written in a larger font size is clear cut line on the chest in this picture is a denotation of this point. The clear cut line on the chest will um, separate the bluish and pale areas and if the blood is pushed towards head in superior vena cava as in this picture then the bluish area will be up and this bluish area is the area of cyanosis and cyanosis as we previously mentioned occurs because of accumulation of carbon dioxide which combines with HB forming HbCO2. And uh, let's read the text, line separating bluish and pale areas and if the blood is pushed towards head in the superior vena cava then the bluish area is up and vice versa. Why does this, what does this vice versa refer to here? Vice versa means that if the blood is pushed down into the inferior vena cava then obviously the bluish area will be down. But the main feature of the, the main and most important feature and what I really want you to take home from this slide is that there will be clear cut line on the chest and uh, in what cases a traumatic asphyxia is found and the best example of this is people dying in Hajj and if a certain person falls in Hajj and the other people step on them their chest wall gets immobilized and this immobilization of chest wall is obviously the definition of traumatic asphyxia. The next thing we are going to discuss is burking phenomena. What is burking? Burking and here were two murderers. They used to sit on the chest of the victim as in this picture and forcibly close the mouth and nose. So they used to sit on the chest of the victim and forcibly close the mouth and nose. So it is a combination of, it is an important MCQ. I have seen it appear more than once in past paper MCQs of 10 doctors that uh, what um, burking is a combination of what? So burking is a combination of smothering and traumatic asphyxia. Why smothering? Because if you uh, close the mouth and the nose, that's the definition of smothering. And if you immobilize the chest by sitting on the chest of the victim, that is uh, traumatic asphyxia. Now, um, burking and the story of burking and hair is a quite a remarkable one, and I hope that you like it. Um, so. What's the story? The story is that in the early part of 19th century in England, a criminal trade flourished relating to the sale of dead bodies to medical schools. So, a special group of individuals uh, emerged who came to know as the resurrectionists. They had a simple solution. They would dig out the buried bodies from graveyard and supply them to the anatomists for a certain price. So, the Edinburgh Medical School was particularly famous for procuring bodies regularly through resurrectionists. The chief anatomist kept his institute well stocked at all times. And the chief suppliers of this medical school were William Berkey and William Hare. Both had realized early in their careers that uh, um, obviously people don't die every day. So, and they struck upon a gruesome plan of generating dead bodies in order to maintain a regular supply. And over a period of time, Berkey perfected a method which they employed with great success. The method of their killing consisting of roaming the disreputable or empty parts of the city at night and picking up beggars. They would invite the poor homeless victims to their home with promises of drink, food and shelter. And at home, and they would drink together and as soon as their guest got drunk enough, Hare would close the mouth and nostrils with his hands and Berkey would sit mercilessly on the chest of the poor victim thus immobilizing the chest for breathing. This was an effective combination of smothering and traumatic asphyxia. In this, met, uh, in this manner, Berkey and Hare succeeded 16 times. I repeat, they succeeded 16 times in this matter. And ultimately, on the 17th incident, a suspicious neighbor informed the police of curious going-ons. Both were arrested and uh, the Hare confessed and uh, the Berkey was ultimately hanged publicly on 28th January, 9, uh, 28th January 1829. So that's all, uh, that's all about working. The next thing we are going to discuss is uh, gagging. What's gagging? Gagging is a form of asphyxia. It means introducing tightly packed material in oral cavity so as to obstruct airways. Autopsy findings are all the same as those of uh, uh, smothering except foreign material like handkerchief, sari and bed sheet will be found in the oral cavity. So let's read the text together once more. It is, a form of, uh, it is a form of asphyxia and results from pushing a gag. What's a gag? Gag is a rolled up cloth or paper ball and uh, this will lead to blockage of the pharynx and ultimately causing asphyxia. On autopsy finding, i.e. specific autopsy finding, uh, non-specific autopsy finding will be found in each and every type of asphyxia. The autopsy finding will be the presence of foreign material in oral cavity. The next thing we are going to discuss is choking. So, what does uh, choking mean? What does choking refer to? I hope you all have uh, some, to some extent, you all have uh, a little bit of uh, understanding about the choking. Choking 
is caused by the uh, an obstruction within the ear passages and this obstruction lies at the level of glottis and the most common cause of this obstruction is food objects food objects like for example seeds toffees candies and even coins can cause choking in children the most uh, important point about this slide is something called cafe coronary what's cafe coronary cafe coronary is a term used to this Describe complete airway obstruction by a bolus of food, as you can see in this picture. There is complete obstruction of food, and uh, slowly complete obstruction of air pathways by the bolus of food. And if the food enters the larynx during swallowing, it usually causes gross choking symptoms of coughing, distress, and cyanosis, which can be fatal until, unless the obstruction is cleared by coughing. However, if the piece of food is large enough, to occlude the larynx completely, it will prevent not only breathing but also speech and coughing. The individual will die silently and the cause of death will not be established easily by the forensic team unless a detailed autopsy is performed. This is called cafe coronary. So, uh, to sum up this whole stuff, choking is when there is incomplete obstruction of the air pathways by a food object so if there is incomplete obstruction well, what's the response of the body the response of the body is coughing in order to clear the air passages but if there is complete obstruction i.e whole obstruction of the air pathways by the food object as in this picture there will be and no speech or coughing, there will be inhibition of card, uh, cardiac activity because the laryngeal nerves will get stimulated and the stimulation of laryngeal nerves will stimulate the uh, vagus and vagal inhibition will be to reflex cardiac arrest. The person will die silently, suddenly and the cause of death will not be easily established until a detailed autopsy is performed by the forensic scientists. This is called cafe coronary. It is a high yield uh, concept and it has appeared more than once in the uh, past paper MCQs of conductors. And the next concept is quite an easy one, autoerotic asphyxiation. What's autoerotic? Auto means self, i.e. it is self-induced. Is, it is not homicidal, it is uh, suicidal. And uh, it is uh, not intentionally, uh, so it, is, uh, it is a suicide which is not intentional. So uh, let's read the text. It is a death occurring during solitary sexual activity. And the main feature of this is use of certain device or appliance that causes neck compression. So the person is enjoying is trying to enjoy a solitary sex activity, and uh, during that event he uses some uh, device or apply or appliance to compress his or her neck. And the main purpose of uh, this compression is to cause cerebral hypoxia with the aim of having an intense climax of orgasm. The autopsy finding will be adult and the adult is mostly male, not always, but in more than 95% of cases it's adult male and the person is nude fully or partly. The person is alone, i.e. Uh, he will be trying to enjoy a solitary sexual activity. There will also be finding of pornographic material in the surrounding. And uh, let's go to the next slide and see what we have got to do there about the strangulation. What strangulation? Uh, strangulation is pressure applied to the neck by means of a ligature or hand. Strangulation is pressure applied to neck by means of ligature or hand. Uh, strangulation uh, is uh, one of the main subtypes of mechanical asphyxia as we previously explained that the mechanical asphyxia can be divided into two broad categories strangulation related mechanical asphyxia and non-strangulation related mechanical asphyxia and uh, we have uh, uh, gone through the non-strangulation uh, related mechanical asphyxia and now it's the turn of strangulation mm, strangulation is a term used to describe the application of pressure to the neck using hands and uh, it is relatively a common mode of homicide what autopsy finding will be found in uh, strangulation? The autopsy findings will be surface injuries to the neck and the jaws. Um, it is important to note that multiple bruises and abrasions of these injuries are also caused by the victim trying to release the grip of the assailant. Uh, I repeat that surface injuries on the neck and jaw in manual strangulation is an important autopsy finding, but it is high yield to note that multiple bruises and abrasions of these injuries are caused by the victim trying to release the grip trying to release the grip of the assailant another important autopsy finding is ligature mark formed by compression and abrasion of skin ligature strangulation ligature strangulation uh, can be homicidal suicidal or even accidental and involves application of pressure to the neck by an item of capable by an item capable of constricting the neck can you guess in any item capable of constricting the neck yes rope wire cable, belts, 
scarf and even neckties can, can be used as a uh, ligatures for strangulation. There is frequently a clear demarcation of congestion, cyanosis and PTK above the level of constricting ligature and there is usually a ligature mark on the neck at the site of constriction as is seen in this uh, picture. This mark may be found by combination of compression and abrasions uh, and abra com by combination of compressing and abrasion forces on the skin of the neck. The uh, next thing uh, is to study the potential outcomes we can uh, expect in cases of strangulation. Now, the potential outcomes is that the extent of injury to soft tissues, soft tissues includes things such as vasculature, the muscles, the extent of injury to these soft tissues uh, and the skeleton of the neck, the skeleton of the neck most important includes hyoid bone and thyroid cartilage and the, uh, the extent of injury to these structures varies depending upon the nature of the pressure applied to the neck. There may be bruising within the muscles in the neck and injury to the superior horns of the thyroid cartilage, which are particularly vulnerable to compressive injury. The, it is high yield to note that uh, uh, injury to soft tissues in muscles and neck will be found and uh, in the skeleton the hyoid bone, more specifically the curator horn of the hyoid bone and more specifically the superior horn of the thyroid cartilage get usually damaged. And how are you we gonna predict that these structures are damaged? Radiological techniques, i.e. x-ray, etc. are effective in identifying such injuries in the deceased. And uh, since uh, previously we mentioned that mechanical asphyxia is divided into strangulation and non-strangulation related um, asphyxias, we have studied the different types of uh, non-strangulation related mechanical asphyxias and these included things such as traumatic asphyxia, smothering and uh, burking etc. And now we are going to study these types of uh, strangulation related mechanical asphyxias and uh, let's go to the next slide to see them. There are five subtypes of mechanical asphyxias. The first one is hanging, second is garroting, throttling, mugging and benzola. You need not to remember um, and you need not to try to remember their names as we are going to study each of them in detail in the coming slides. So inshallah once you go to the detail it will be easy to recall their name but uh, what I really want you to take home from this slide is the definition of last two as these are considerably low yield and I am not going to repeat them uh, even once after this slide. So what's mugging? It is a type of stimulation in which the pressure is applied by elbows. It is, a, it is a type of stimulation in which the pressure is applied by elbows. And what's bandola? It's a type of stimulation in which the pressure is applied by using hard sticks. Now, uh, I'm, uh, I repeat it, I'm not going to repeat these two things, these two subtypes of stimulation, uh, even once after this slide, so you really need to um, bear them in mind.